Hi, I'm Greg, and I'm joined by Liam from Shot of Wildlife, and we've come down to Mousehold to follow the Earth Heritage Trail. So the trail is made up of 18 different points that showcase the geological features that make Mousehold so unique. We're going to be stopping at them points and seeing if we can't film some wildlife on the way. Let's go. Let's go. Mousehold Heath is an area of heathland and woodland in the northeastern area of Norwich, the home city of Liam and myself. It has a rich history and has been a valuable resource for people living in the area for over a thousand years, but its history goes back even further than that. It sits on a bedrock of Cretaceous chalk dating around 75 million years old, and its landscape has been shaped by Ice Age glaciers and hundreds of years of quarrying for sand and gravel. It was the site of a supposed ritual murder in 1144 of a young boy called William, who later became a saint. In 1549 it was used as a camp by an army of Robert Kett's rebels, numbering 16,000, who stormed the city of Norwich, capturing it. It was used as an airport during the First and Second World Wars, and even had a prisoner of war camp for German workers. We start our trail on St James's Hill, that gives us fantastic views out across Norwich. It's also a great place to see one of the Dry Valley landforms of Mousehold. Dry valleys formed in permeable soils during the Ice Age, perhaps when the climate was wetter and groundwater levels were higher, or in permafrost conditions, when the ground was frozen so it could be eroded by the meltwaters. The air is alive with the sound of grasshoppers. This is a common field grasshopper, Adults are found from June until late autumn, feeding on plants and grasses. The males produce the song to attract the females, who after mating will lay their eggs in the soil to hatch out next summer. Moving on to point number two on the trail, we cross the busy road that runs through the centre of Mousehold and enter a more wooded area to find St James's Hollow. This large pit is one of the biggest chalk and gravel pits in the Norwich area. This area of Mousehold shows some of the chalk bedrock. This dates back to the Cretaceous period, and this area apparently is one of the best places in Britain to find mosasaur remains. You having fun over there? Having a wonderful time! <laughs> the chalk was laid down in tropical seas around 75 million years ago, and due to the abundance of fossil remains like the previously mentioned mosasaurs, it is a site of special scientific interest. Above the chalk you can see the Norwich Crag, a sandy marine deposit laid down two million years ago. On the way to point three on the trail, we discover some interesting plant life. Most of the trees that we find on Mousehold are native broadleaf species, such as this sycamore, or there's birch and there's oak as well. But not this tree here. This is a giant redwood. The giant redwood is the largest living species of tree in the world and can live for more than 3,000 years. They can grow to over 300 foot tall and have a diameter of more than 30 foot across. They are a native of North America and it is here that they remained until the mid 19th century when the first seeds were transported to Europe. Some of these seeds were planted at stately homes around the country but it wasn't until the turn of the 20th century that this tree was planted on Mousehold. I can't find exactly who planted the tree but rumour has it that it was planted along with some other specimen trees to encourage people to visit a heath and the recently constructed tea rooms nearby. These tea rooms still stand today, but is now the home of Zach's restaurant. Arriving at point three, we find a small gravel pit which shows some of the coarse glacial gravels which underlie the high ground of the heath. These are thought to have been part of an outwash plain at the end of the Anglian glacial period dating back around 430,000 years ago. We move on from point three and discover this unexpected heath inhabitant. 
Although there is a large population of rabbits on heath, the coloration of this one's fur marks this out as an escaped or possibly abandoned pet. We briefly considered catching it and seeing if we could track down the owner, but it seemed pretty happy and we didn't really have anywhere to put it. The only danger it might face out here is its bright white coloration makes it easier for predators to spot over the darker brown colour of wild rabbits. This area is point four on the trail and shows us another cutaway in the earth which displays interesting geology from an older, deeper layer of mousehold. This sandy pit shows layers of alternating yellow sand and brown clay sand underneath the gravel. This gravel was deposited by a meltwater stream flowing across a glacial outwash plain, whilst the sandy layers would have been deposited in quieter water such as a lagoon. These layers may date from a glaciation older than the Anglian. Point number five again has several cutaways, allowing us to see deep into the geological past. This area is the best place to see the glacial sands and gravel which form the main body of Mousehold. There are alternating layers of sands, gravels and thin layers of clay. These layers were probably deposited from slabs of dead ice. This is the name given to a glacial ice sheet that has ceased to move and melts in place leaving behind hummocky terrain. We're going to move on to point number 7 now, missing out point 6 as we couldn't find it. The map can be a bit tricky to follow at times and there are no direction markers out on the heath for the trail. This is Lazar House. It's one of the oldest buildings in the area. It's not known exactly when it was first built, but it is in the region of 1000 years old. It was first used as a chapel and a hospital for lepers. This area would have been open countryside at the time, well away from other people and dwellings. It continued in this role for many years. In 1547 the hospital was closed down and it was later converted into a dovecote. The dovecote was damaged by Ket's rebels during the rebellion in 1549. The now dilapidated chapel was used as a barn for around 200 years before being converted into cottages in the early 1800s. It was renovated in the early 1900s and became a working men's club. It then became Norwich's first branch library in 1923. It remained a library until 2003. It is currently the home of Assist Trust, a charity that cares for people with learning disabilities. It is included as part of the Earth Heritage Trail because of the flint used in its construction would have been quarried from Mousehold. The red brick would also have come from Mousehold, possibly from point number 6, which we didn't see, which was a vast quarry where clay was dug up to make red bricks called muscle bricks. Point number 8 can be found in the gardens of a block of flats. There's not much to see now, but under the gravel is the remains of a lime kiln. This was the last working lime kiln in Norwich and was shut down around 1968. It was built around 200 years ago as a ring-shaped underground structure where chalk was burnt to make builders lime. Point number 9 again shows little evidence of its history to the passerby, but 100 years ago this area was a busy complex of brick pits and kilns. Beneath the layers of sand and gravel is brick earth. This was quarried from Mousehold and bricks were made in this spot continuously in a large Hoffman kiln. Brick making continued here until after World War II and the brick kiln was eventually demolished in the 1950s. You may recognise this pond behind me as this appeared in many of my videos over the last couple of years in the Frog Watch series and I'll leave a link to that in case you're interested. I've only just recently learned that this is called a vinegar pond. This part of the heath has seen sand and gravel quarrying since the Middle Ages and only stopped after 1880. Vinegar Pond is an important site for breeding frogs, which you'll know all about if you've seen any of my Frog Watch videos over the last couple of years, as this is where I get the tadpoles from. Frogs aren't the only wildlife found in this area. As I approached the earth cutaway to view the geology of the area, I glimpsed a flash of orange out of the corner of my eye. This was a slow worm, but despite its name, it was too quick for me as I watched its tail disappear into the undergrowth. It's not a worm or a snake despite its appearance, it's actually a legless lizard. It has the ability to shed its tail to evade predators. 
it can often be seen basking in the sun or hunting around compost heaps and will go into hibernation from October to March. We also saw this speckled bush cricket, its bright green colour perfectly blending into the vegetation. This is a female and it can be identified by its large upcurved ovipositor. So we were just walking through on this line of trees when this fell from the tree. It's an acorn that has been parasitised by an acorn gall wasp and grown into this, which is commonly known as a nopper gall. During the spring and early summer, the gall wasp laid its egg inside the oak bud. The bud developed not into a normal acorn, but instead into this gall. Acorn gall wasps only started breeding in the UK during the 1970s, as they have a second stage in their life cycle that relies upon the turkey oak. This species was only becoming common during the 1970s. Well, we seem to have taken the wrong turn somewhere and we've completely lost the trail. Uh, we know there's another three points on the other side of the road, so we're going to try and cross that and see if we can pick up the trail over there. We were unable to locate the next few points on the trail, so we decided to cross the road and try to pick up the trail from point 15. But just as we were about to reach the road, we came upon a trail marker. Well, we found one of the marker posts. Unfortunately, the number's fallen off, so we have no idea which one it is. It hasn't really helped us, but we are on the trail. However, there is a very nice bracket fungus down here. Take a look at this. Bracket fungi, also known as polypores, are a group of fungi that form fruiting bodies called conchs with pores or tubes on the underside. Most bracket fungi inhabit tree trunks or branches where they consume the wood, weakening the tree. They play a vital role in nutrient cycling and carbon dioxide production of forest ecosystems as they are the most important agents of wood decay. There are over 1,000 polypore species known, but there are many more that have not been studied and their true diversity is unknown. Most bracket fungi are edible, or at least non-toxic, but there are some species that are poisonous and can affect the liver and nervous systems. As with all fungi, make sure you know exactly what species you're looking at before you even think about eating it. Alright, so we found the road and we've, uh, we've reorientated ourselves. We think the point we were just at was point 14 and we think point 15 is further down this way. So let's, uh, let's see if we can find it. 200 years ago, Mousehold was an open heathland with very few trees. Local people dug for sand and gravel, herded livestock and collected firewood. These traditional land uses ceased once the heath became a public park and trees began to invade. Today the site is managed by local authorities and in several areas trees have been cleared to restore the heathland habitat. Point number 15 shows some of that work. This area has been cleared of trees and heathland vegetation such as gorse, heather, bracken and other scrub vegetation has been allowed to re-establish. This work will benefit a wide variety of species such as this small copper butterfly. Preferring chalky grassland, heathland or woodland clearings, I was very happy to see it as although it will occasionally visit gardens, it has not visited mine and this was the first one I've seen this year. Males are very territorial and will behave very aggressively to passing insects. It is a common and widespread butterfly although it has declined during the 20th century. The heathland area is a perfect spot to see snakes and lizards but despite searching for them, they did not want to be found. It was incredibly hot today and we suspect that most of the wildlife had sought out cooler places to hide away during the main sunlight. This area behind me used to be a sand and gravel pit in the 1950s, now it's pitch and putt. This area was quarried by the Mousehold Stone Pit Company in the early 1900s and continued through the wartime years before closing down in 1950. They produced a range of gravel, shingle and sand building material products. So here we are at point number 17, which although it looks really unremarkable, it's actually the site of a 1935 discovery of a Neanderthal hand axe. That axe would have dated between 42 and 60,000 years ago. The 
this huge mound of earth that we're sitting on right now we believe was used by the Victorian army as a rifle range. So this is number 18 on our trail with 18 points so we're at the end of our journey. Unfortunately, because it's been so hot, we think most of the animal species have been hiding from us. We did manage to get some good fungus, and remember that giant redwood? It's been a good day. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some of the other ones that we've done together? Well, Hakeling Broad, where we found some swallowtail butterflies, or maybe the West Runton, where we did some rock pooling. I'll leave links to those in the description, and you can also click on the card as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.